What's up everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of Da Vinci Cases. Alright, so the way this works is we've got a clinical case followed by a board style question. So we're going to go through the question stem, point out the relevant clinical findings, take a look at the question and the answer choices, and then kind of divert for a minute and go through the relevant concepts to answering the question. Then we'll come back and apply those concepts that we went over to answering the question. So for this case, we've got a 37-year-old woman presents to the emergency room after taking an entire bottle of acetaminophen, which acetaminophen is uh, Tylenol. So an entire bottle of acetaminophen tablets in an apparent suicide attempt. She denied ingesting any other drugs or alcohol. So this is important and you'll see why when we get into the discussion aspect of this. Uh, but other drugs and alcohol can have an impact on how acetaminophen is metabolized, uh, which can contribute to its level of toxicity as we'll talk about. Her only symptoms are abdominal pain and nausea. And then her vital signs are temperature of 37 degrees Celsius, so she's afebrile. Heart rate is a little high at 102. Uh, blood pressure is 116 over 70, maybe a tad below normal, but nothing too concerning. Respirations are 16 per minute, which is kind of on the lower end of normal, but still okay. And then O2 sat is 98%. So hemodynamically stable, respiratory status-wise, she's stable. Anytime anyone comes in, you know, this time we know what the drug is, but when someone comes in with a drug overdose, you definitely want to be paying attention to the respiratory status, especially if they overdosed on opioids, which can depress respiratory functions. So you definitely want to be paying attention to that as well. Labs are notable for an aspartate aminotransferase or AST of 634, which is, as you can see, much higher than the upper limit of normal of 32. And then alanine aminotransferase, or ALT, of 423, which is much higher than the upper limit of normal for ALT, which is 25. So her liver enzymes are extremely elevated. This is what's called a transaminitis. So the question is, which of the following zones in the image to the right would be most affected in this patient? So we have a histology image here, and there's three zones, one outlined in yellow, one out he outlined here in green, and one outlined here in uh, bluish or purplish, and it's ABC, and it's asking which of these zones would be most affected. So this is a slide of the liver, and this slide is generously provided by Dr. Lisa Lee from the University of Colorado School of Medicine. Dr. Lee is a collaborator of Da Vinci Academy. We produce the histology course with her. She's the histology course director at the School of Medicine at, at Colorado. Definitely check out our histology videos and histology course. Uh, many of them are on YouTube. And then we have practice questions and lab videos on our website. So make sure you check out our histology offering as well from Da Vinci Academy. Anyways, this is a liver slide. These are uh, the liver parenchyma, and we'll get more into what the slide shows in a minute here. But just kind of to summarize the key findings again here. So this is a young woman presenting with acetaminophen toxicity. She's experiencing abdominal pain and nausea, which are typical symptoms of acetaminophen toxicity. Again, it's affecting the liver. So when, Or liver inflammation can manifest as you know abdominal pain, nausea. Her vital signs are stable. Her labs are notable for transaminitis, notably an elevated AST and ALT, most likely reflecting an acute liver injury. So which zone of the liver parenchyma is most affected by metabolic toxins? That's essentially what this question is asking you. And so if you remember, there's a zone one, there's a zone two, and there's a zone three. We'll go over this in a minute here. So it's asking you which of these is most affected by metabolic toxins, which is what acetaminophen would be. And we'll talk about how you characterize a metabolic toxin in a minute here. So the answer is zone three. Answer choice A here. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break from the case right now to let you know that Da Vinci Cases is brought to you by Da Vinci Academy, which provides online video courses for the medical basic sciences. These courses are taught using a variety of teaching methods, including bullet point outlines, diagrams, radiology images, and chalk talks to explain the fundamental concepts. We then teach the application of those concepts to numerous clinical pearls that are frequently tested on medical school exams and the USMLE. Our video courses are available on our website, dviacademy.com, as monthly subscriptions starting at $9.99 per month. Each video course has a corresponding outline format textbook as well. You can find the link to our website in the description below, also, be sure to use the discount code DC20 to receive 20% off any of our video courses. Now back to the case. 
To understand this, first we have to talk about how acetaminophen is metabolized. Now, acetaminophen is one of the most commonly used drugs in the world. It's for headaches, fever, joint pain, those types of things. And so, you know, obviously taking it isn't toxic, but it's when you take way too much of it. That's when you get to toxic levels. So acetaminophen is mostly metabolized in the liver. There's a little bit of it that's processed and released in the uh, kidney, which is maybe about 5%, but 95% of it happens in the liver. So there's a process called glucuronidation, which gives you acetaminophen glucuronide, and that gets, you know, obviously excreted. Then you have sulfation, which gives you acetaminophen sulfate. And this is probably 90, 95% of how it's acetaminophen is metabolized even in the liver. And so the majority of it ha- goes through that. Probably 5 to 10% of it though goes through the cytochrome P450 pathway, which is another enzyme for metabolizing toxins, drugs, you name it, all types of things uh, in the liver. When it goes through the cytochrome P450 pathway though, it produces a molecule called NAPQI. And this stands for n acetyl para benzoquinonamine. For short, we'll call it NAPQI. And so NAPQI is actually toxic to the hepatocytes. So you don't want to have too much of it because then that can cause toxicity. So what happens is is you have glutathione, which is commonly used to uh, essentially clean up cells. And so it helps process and clean up NAPQI so it doesn't damage the liver and breaks it down into cysteine and mercaptopuric acid. And those get excreted and those are of much less toxicity. And so that's kind of the liver's way of dealing with the small amount of NAPQI that is produced uh, via the cytochrome P450 pathway. Now, what happens is, is if you have used up glutathione or depleted it, then what happens is you have a buildup of NAPQI, and that is very toxic and can cause significant cell damage. There's some worsening factors here. So if you have dramatically high levels of acetaminophen, then you're going to obviously oversaturate these other pathways, and you're going to actually have to force more that comes through the cytochrome P450 pathway. These are essentially going to max out, and you're going to max out sulfation and force it through the cytochrome cytochrome P450 pathway. So you're going to have a significantly high level of NAPQI, and then you're going to deplete glutathione even further and force it more towards this pathway. The other things that can result this is that these glucuronidation and sulfation pathways can be uh, saturated by malnourishment. They don't mention that for this patient, but that's just something to be aware of. So that can force more acetaminophen to go through the cytochrome P450 pathway. The other thing is that alcohol actually increases cytochrome P450 activity. So ingesting alcohol, large amounts of alcohol can increase NAPQI. And then alcohol breakdown, so the metabolic process of breaking down alcohol in the liver, actually depletes glutathione. So for our patient, She's ingested a large amount of acetaminophen. You've maxed out these normal pathways for breakdown of acetaminophen and then created a large amount of NAPQI. And then as a result of just an overwhelming amount of acetaminophen, you've depleted all your glutathione and then it's resulted in significant amounts of NAPQI, which leads to cell damage. And so then that's what leads to your elevated AST and ALT. And so that's how you get your transaminitis. And more importantly, this is really toxic to the liver. And so you need, it needs to be treated. So to understand which zone of the liver gets most affected by metabolic toxins or acetaminophen toxicity, we have to understand what a liver acinus is. It's a functional unit of the liver parenchyma. And now the liver can be divided into a number of different functional units. But for the purpose of this, we'll just focus on the acinus. It's a triangular shaped with one central vein forming the apex of the triangle. So you can see here you have a central vein, which is shown here in this histology section. And so this forms the apex of the triangle. And so again, you have zone one, two, and three. And if you see, it's kind of how in close approximation they are into this central vein. So zone one, then zone two, zone three, and you move closer and closer to that central vein. Now, the central vein forms the apex. Now, this is a theoretical sense of organize this or look at this. And so you have zone one at the base of the triangle, and then you move closer. Zone two and zone three is here, the uh, apex or the top portion of the triangle. And then the portal triad forms the base of the triangle, which would be down here. And the portal triad, remember, contains a branch of the portal vein, a branch of the hepatic artery, and then a bile ductual. The bile ductual is what carries bile. Remember, bile is produced in the liver, and then it's carried through these ductules into the biliary tree or the bile ducts, 
and then down into you know where it's released into the in small intestines to help digest lipids and fatty acids. And so these three zones are actually divided based on the direction of blood flow and blood O2 content. And you'll see why that's important in a second. Now what's important to know is that if we blow this section up here for histology, so we've taken this section here and made it more magnified, you can see each of these, this is an H&E stain, you know, uh, hematoxin and eosin. So remember the hepatocytes, you know, full of proteins, they're gonna stain more eosinophilic or this pinkish color here. And then these round purple colored uh, circles or dots are the nuclei of the hepatocytes. And you can kind of see where they form these, almost like these channels in between. You have these rows of hepatocytes, and we'll show you a uh, diagram here in a second to illustrate this. But you can appreciate this where it's these rows of hepatocytes, and then you have these channels in between or called sinusoids. So the apical surface faces the bile cannuliculi, which drain into the bile ductule, and then the basolateral surface faces the sinusoids. So for this diagram here, we illustrate how the portal triad plays a role in this. So you have the portal triad, which would be here at the base of this triangle of the liver acinus, kind of at the base of this zone one here. Now remember the portal triad, you have a branch of the portal vein, which the portal vein is actually the main blood supply to the liver. It's formed by the splenic vein and the superior mesenteric vein, which both drain the GI tract. And so remember, after we absorb a number of nutrients and other things that we ingest through the intestinal tract, it actually has to get first processed by the liver. And so that's why. So the portal vein is actually the majority of the blood supply. The hepatic artery is kind of the backup. It, it provides some of it, but only if like the portal vein went down. Let's say if you had a thrombosis of the portal vein, then the hepatic artery could take over and provide the majority of the blood supply. So what's important, though, is the way they flow. And so again, we're just indicating here that you have a dual blood supply to the liver. The, the portal vein will flow towards the central vein. The hepatic artery will also flow towards the central vein. And then remember the central vein, they all kind of come together and drain into these hepatic veins, which then drain into the IVC and send the blood back to the heart. Now remember, bile is produced by hepatocytes within the liver parenchyma. And so what's important to remember here is that bile is actually going to flow in the opposite direction of blood in this case, in these liver acinus. And so it's going to flow towards this bile ductule make its way there, then it, all of those will drain into the bile ducts and then make their way into the common bile duct, which then goes into the intestines. So on the diagram here, you have portal venous blood, which by this blue arrow, as you can see, is heading towards the central vein. Then you have the hepatic art arterial blood as well. And then you can see where you have the green arrow going in the opposite direction, and that represents bile flow from bile production to the bile ductule. So the reason we care about all of this is that if you remember the flow of blood, it starts in zone one. So this is where you're gonna get the first hit of blood, both from the portal vein and from the hepatic artery. So this is gonna receive the most oxygenated blood. Remember, you haven't made your way all the way to this final draining vein. So this is the first kind of zone of parenchyma or, cell, or zone of cells. They get first pick essentially of oxygen. So they're gonna get the highest amount. For zone one, by receiving the most oxygenated blood, it's the least susceptible to ischemia. So if you have some kind of ischemic event, patients in shock, you know, losing blood, something like that, where there's, you know, decrease of blood to the liver itself, it, the, mo the least susceptible is going to be zone one. Now on the flip side, because it receives blood first, it's going to be most affected by ingested toxins, such as cocaine. And then it's also affected first by viral hepatitis. So viral hepatitis traveling through the blood, it's going to first hit, the, this is the first zone to be hit. Because of that, it's the first hit by viral hepatitis. Now zone two isn't that interesting. It's kind of, it's called the intermediate zone. It's between zone one and zone three. A little tidbit, it's affected by yellow fever. That's an uh, infectious disease pearl that you should remember. Sometimes it's asked on your, could be asked on your board exam. So just keep that in mind. But other than that, in the intermediate zone, there's not much else to it. Zone three, by the time, again, by the time you've gotten to zone three, the, you're receiving the least oxygenated blood because you've given up a lot of oxygen to zone one and zone two. So for that reason, it's the first affected by ischemia. So if you have ischemia, again, Zone three is going to be the first one where you're going to have, you know, potentially cell death and cell necrosis. It also contains the highest concentration of cytochrome P450. Remember that enzyme we we're talking about that is involved in, you know, drug metabolism, acetaminophen metabolism. The, the highest concentration is here in zone three. For that reason, it's the most sensitive to metabolic toxins. So where when toxins are getting broken down, it's predominantly in zone three by the cytochrome P450 pathway is a, is a major player in the breakdown of toxins. So then it's gonna get affected. Same thing with alcohol. Remember, alcohol is also involved in the cytochrome P450 metabolism. 
it, this is going to be the most affected by alcohol. So remember anything that's like metabolized in the liver, whether it's alcohol, drugs, any of those types of things that are metabolized in the liver, it's going to be this zone three. And a big part of that is because it contains the highest concentration of cytochrome P450. The other thing is it receives the lowest amount of oxygen. So it's also affected by first by ischemia. So zone three can really get hit for a lot of different reasons. Zone one, the big one is that it, it's ingested toxins. So these are toxins when we say ingest, I mean, they haven't been metabolized. So they're just coming to us fresh in the blood. They haven't been metabolized. So if we come back to the question here, you know, unfortunately, as a young woman with acetaminophen toxicity, we're asking which zone in the image to the right is most effective in this patient. If we look at this again, you have zone three, zone two, zone one, central vein. Here's your, if you imagine your triangle like this, zone three is the answer. It's the zone that receives the least oxygenated blood. It's the first zone affected by ischemia for that reason. It's also the most susceptible to metabolic toxins, such as acetaminophen, because of that high concentration of cytochrome P450. Zone two, the biggest thing to remember there is it's just affected by yellow fever. And then zone one, it it's the first one to receive perfusion, so it's going to receive the most oxygenated blood. It's also the most affected by ingested toxins because it's the first one to receive blood. Also, for that reason, it's the first zone affected by viral hepatitis. So again, this is a patient with acetaminophen toxicity and the zone of the liver that will be most affected is zone three. All right, that's all I have for you this time. Be sure to check out all the DaVinci Cases videos available on our YouTube channel and our website, dviacademy.com. The PDF notes for every DaVinci Cases is also available on our website. Also be sure to check out our podcast, The DaVinci Hour, where we interview attendings and residents across medicine to learn more about their experiences, their specialties, and to get their insights on navigating a career in medicine. You can find the DaVinci Hour podcast on our website or any platform where podcasts are found. Lastly, you can find all of our video courses and corresponding outline format books on our website. Don't forget to use the discount code DC20 for 20% off.